Open the podcast bay door as hell. Welcome to episode 101 of Welcome to Geek Town. I'm your host, Kurt Onstead. I've been a proud geek all my life, being into role-playing games, board games, sci-fi, fantasy, and especially superheroes and comics. And I want to help others join me in those pursuits, but i found that sometimes people can get overwhelmed or feel left out because they don't already have what some consider the requisite knowledge to be considered a fan. And that's where Welcome to Geek Town comes in. Here, you can ask your questions without feeling like a gatekeeper is calling you out for not yet being fully versed in every aspect of your new interest. Young listener Aiden has sent another message to me asking about a character I mentioned briefly in episode 85. Let's hear it in his own words. Hey, Geek Town. So I listened to episode 85 and it inspired a different question to me. Um, I heard you referenced Swordmaster and I haven't read the comics, so I have absolutely no idea who he is. Who is Swordmaster? Thanks for the question, Aiden. And you can go ahead and call me Kurt rather than Geek Down, as we're all citizens of Geek Down here. Before I answer this question, let me start off with a confession. I made a mistake in the podcast episode Aiden is referring to. I said Swords Master when I meant Swordsmen. Both are names of Marvel characters, and I pictured in my head the correct one, but I wrote and said the wrong one in the episode. My only excuse is that with the episode being about Taskmaster, who is named Tony Masters, I had Master on the brain. As a mea culpa for my error, I'll tell you about both of them, starting with the one I actually meant to mention in that previous episode, Jacques Duquesne, aka The Swordsman. Jacques started out his career working in a circus, showing off his expertise in all sorts of bladed weapons. It was during this period in his life that Jacques met a young Clint Barton and took him under his wing, teaching him how to fight with melee weapons, while fellow circus performer Buck Chisholm, using the stage name Trickshot, taught Hawkeye how to use the bow. While Clint was learning the skills that would eventually serve him as one of the Avengers, Jacques was getting deeper and deeper into debt due to a gambling problem. Eventually, Jacques decided to steal from the circus in order to pay off what he owed. Clint discovered the money in Swordsman's possession, and in the ensuing chase, Clint ended up falling to what appeared to be his death, after which Jacques immediately went on the run. Obviously, Clint did survive, but Jacques did not learn that until years later. Now an international fugitive, Jacques went on a crime spree around the world and was never caught, although he was on multiple law enforcement agencies' radars. For some reason, Swordsman thought that a good step to even bigger scores would be to join the Avengers. He infiltrated the team's headquarters and fought them, trying to show off his skills, but was promptly rejected. However, at the end of the fight, he was teleported away by the Mandarin, who decided to use Swordsman as a pawn in his own quest in revenge on Tony Stark, aka Iron Man, who wasn't actually an Avenger at the time. In addition to upgrading Swordsman's weapon with powers similar to some of the Mandarin's rings, The would-be world beater also created a hologram of Iron Man and sent a message using this illusion, claiming that he had specifically sent Swordsman to join the team. With this barest of justifications, Swordsman was allowed on the Avengers 
and worked with them for a few weeks, although the regular members were still very suspicious of the newcomer. The Mandarin intended to have Swordsman plant and set off a bomb once Iron Man returned to the team, but got impatient and ordered Jacques to set it off immediately. Swordsman changed his mind, mostly due to his crush on Scarlet Witch, and decided to disarm the device instead. When the Avengers find him with the now-removed device, they leap to the conclusion that Swordsman had been interrupted in the process of installing the bomb, something he had actually done much earlier. The Swordsman protested, but his pleas went unheard and he quickly retreated. This story, which also includes most of the backstory mentioned earlier, takes place over the course of two issues. Avengers number 19 and number 20. Comic book storytelling has become greatly decompressed over the years. For the next few years, Jacques would be seen fighting on both sides of the law, wanting to be a hero but lacking the willpower to stay straight for too long. The next important bit of his story comes when he falls for Mantis who, at the time, was employed as a barmaid under the same Vietnamese warlord that Swordsman was currently working for. Those of you only familiar with the films should note that Mantis in the comics is a human woman rather than the alien that has joined the Guardians of the Galaxy in the MCU. The psychic heroine convinced Jacques to try working on the side of the angels once again, and the pair left for the US, and their sincerity convinced the Avengers to accept them into their fold, although only Swordsman officially joins the team at this point. Now, hold on to your hat, because here's where the story gets weird. Originally, Mantis and Swordsman were shown to be romantically involved, but that quickly fizzled out on their introduction into the Avengers as Mantis becomes infatuated with the Vision, although he does not return the romantic feelings. Mantis only realizes the true depth of her feelings towards Swordsman just moments before he is killed by Kang. Yes, Jacques dies, sacrificing himself to save Mantis, but as is often the case in comics, that's not the end of his story. Mantis, we learn in this story, is the Celestial Madonna, a prophesied figure destined to give birth to the Celestial Messiah. When Mantis buried Swordsman's body in the temple garden where she was raised, the tree he was buried beneath was actually the eldest of an alien plant race known as the Kotadi, who was to be the father of the Celestial Messiah according to the prophecy. This prime Kotadi possessed the body of Jacques, retaining much of his memories and personality as well. This new swordsman explains his origins to Mantis, and the two are quick to wed, in a double wedding alongside Scarlet Witch and Vision, officiated by Immortus. And the pair seemingly transform into energy and fly off to parts unknown. Later, Mantis returned to Earth, asking for help from the West Coast Avengers, as she had no memory of her time since she left Earth. When their investigation leads them back to the temple where Swordsman's body had originally been buried, said body bursts from its grave, once again inhabited by the Prime Kotadi. It kills the mantis that had returned, but this reveals that this mantis was actually a plant creature possessed with the spirit of mantis, and the shock of this death in proximity to where her body actually was buried in stasis allowed her to reunite body and soul and return. And the Prime Katadi departs Swordsman's body, leaving it to disintegrate into dust. We eventually learn that the Prime Katadi and Mantis had their son, but that Mantis was exiled from Tamal, the Katadi homeworld, and that their child, named Sequoia, or Koi for short, was raised primarily by the Kotadi Collective. While Prime Kotadi had been revered by his people, the effect of merging with Swordsman had changed him so much that he was now reviled instead. This ostracization 
caused the Kotati swordsman, as I'll refer to him from now on, to grow to hate himself and by extension all animal life, as he saw that as the source of his corruption. This self-hatred was fueled even more when, after returning to his tree form on Earth and planting himself back in the temple garden he had grown in, he ended up being the sole survivor of a corporate effort to raise the grove he was resting in. He killed all of the humans that had been part of this attack, and this helped turn his son Koi down a destructive path as well. In the recent Empire story, spelled with a Y rather than an I if you decide to search it out, Koi and Katati swordsmen worked together to create a Death Blossom flower that increased the plant-controlling powers of the Katati, allowing them to invade both Kree and Skrull territories. Ironically, this brought the long warring races to unite into the Kree-Skrull alliance, shifting the power balance of the known universe dramatically. Katati swordsmen approached the Avengers and, under the guise of his old peaceful nature, pretended to seek protection from this new alliance. However, his true nature was soon revealed, and the Avengers joined with the Kree and Skrulls to fight off a Kotati invasion set on wiping out all animal life in the universe. During the final fight of this war, the Kotati swordsman was killed by Black Panther, preventing the Death Blossom from blooming in Wakanda's vibranium-infused soil which would have increased Koi's powers to cosmic levels. Neither the original swordsman nor his Kotati counterpart have been seen since that story ended in November of 2020, but as you know by now, any comic death can be overturned eventually. And with a character named Jack Duquesne appearing in the upcoming Hawkeye show on Disney+, Plus, I'm sure if that version of Hawkeye's mentor gains in popularity, we'll be seeing his return to the comics eventually. Let's move on to the character that I actually named in that previous episode, Swordmaster. A much more recent addition to the Marvel Universe, he was created in 2018 and was part of one of Marvel's push for more international heroes and creators in their stable. Originally created for the Chinese market, by writer Shui Zhu and artist Gunji, Swordmaster is the alias of Lin Lai, the last descendant of Fuqi, a folk hero from actual Chinese legends, and is granted the Fuqi sword, which has various mystical powers. Swordmaster was first seen in American comics when he was added to the Agents of Atlas team, then received his own miniseries the front half of each issue translating the original Chinese stories, with the back half containing stories written by Korean-American writer Greg Pak, where the new hero teamed up with and was trained by the latest Marvel Cinematic Universe star, Shang-Chi. He's made minor appearances as part of the Agents of Atlas team as recently as February of this year, protecting Shanghai from the worldwide symbiote invasion in the King in Black storyline. However, since most of Marvel's stories still take place in the U.S., unless a writer decides to have Lin move, it's unfortunately unlikely that we'll be seeing a lot of him in the foreseeable future. Thanks again to Aiden for asking the question, and don't forget that I'm always looking for new questions. If you have any topics you'd like to hear about, you can send any and all of those via email to welcometogeektown at gmail.com. Or you can go to the website. Welcome to, the number two in this case, geektown.com and click the submit a question link if you'd prefer to remain anonymous. Other contact options include facebook.com slash welcome to geektown or twitter at geektown podcast. Also, if you'd like to support the show directly, come join the Patreon at patreon.com slash welcome to geektown for just a dollar per month to get access to full scripts of the shows, outtakes, and a monthly shout-out. 
You can also help the show grow by subscribing and giving a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts to join the Geek Town City Council, which helps other people find the show so we can all tell them, Welcome to Geek Town, Population, Us. Welcome to Geek Town is written, narrated, edited, and produced by me, Kurt Onstead. Theme music is by Aaron Lovitz, logo art by Archie Santana. All other sound clips are the copyrighted material of their respective owners, and no infringement is intended, falling under fair use.